five traits of a good reseller. Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So in this one I'm going to be talking about five different traits that I feel make up a good reseller. So these aren't going to be in any sort of order. Number one isn't necessarily the most important. Number five isn't necessarily the least important. They're just in any random order. And we're going to start with persistence. So this is a fairly big one. And if you are a reseller for any length of time, you're going to come across problems and things that are going to test your persistence. And... Uh, whether you know whether that be problems with your eBay account, restrictions, listings being taken down, or maybe listing bans. I've have had a listing ban before. That was not fun. Um, or any anything to do with that. Uh, whether it's your Amazon account, Amazon restrictions, things like that. Whether it's PayPal issues. Whether it's um, equipment issues. Issues with your equipment. Whether that be your camera to do your photos or your lighting setup or your printer or your computer or your phone, all that sort of stuff. So persistence is a big one and you need to be able to attack those problems day after day and persist with them. Be persistent and follow through and be able to solve those problems in in a fairly sort of quick manner but also in a professional manner as well. And tied on to persistence um, would also be contingency. So contingency plans, thinking about like sort of forward thinking and thinking to yourself, well, if this goes wrong, while I'm trying to persist in fixing the problem, I need to have a contingency, a backup, that will allow me to continue, to continue my business. And for me, I've recent, my printer's recently broke down or something's happened with it. I've got, well, I've ordered a new one now because I seriously have tried everything with it. I cannot get that thing to work. What I'm probably going to do is sell it on, like for spares or something. Um, but yeah, anyway, that, so that's happened. So my contingency was my mum and dad's printer. And then, that worked for a few days, that was fine. But then, that one ran out of ink. So now I've got my third contingency plan, which is the absolute like sort of dead end, which is today, it's Friday today, I've got to go around my friends and I've got to ask him, I've got to ask Ryan if I can use his printer or his mum and dad's printer so that then my business can continue running basically. So yeah, um, it's always worth even having like a double contingency plan in situations like that. So uh, yeah, and it does test your persistence and it tests your problem solving ability as well. Um, yeah, so persistence is right. I've got my list here, so I'm just going to look over here. Adaptability, massive one. Um, do you have the sort of necessary, um, uh, what, what am I trying to say? The necessary skills to be able to adapt uh, to any given situation or, you know, maybe, for example, we've got, this Amazon palaver at the moment, fee increases and things are getting restricted and it might get worse as the months and years progress. So you've got to have the adaptability to be able to adapt to that, to that new, uh, that new platform. And you've got to be able to look at it and think, right, I can see where this is going and I need to think, I need to think now where I want to adapt to be able to sort of get round it. So, yeah, adaptability is a massive one. Maybe it's the adaption of um, selling different products because maybe the market's bottomed out on your products or something um, and you need to then adapt to sell in a different niche. So, yeah, you've got to have good adaptability skills and you can learn adaptability. I, I don't necessarily think I'm amazing at adapting in, I just jump in and that's like me learning to adapt. I've never really thought I was very good at adapting. I've never liked change. I hate I just hate change but what I do now is I just think right I'm just going to dive in and just don't even care you know I'm just going to dive in and then you sort of get used to it and you get used to that change and that diversification so you can certainly learn how to adapt and do those things and you can learn all of these skills but 
I do think to some extent you, you're sort of maybe not born with them because I don't really believe in that ide ideology that you are born with your personality but if uh, certainly you could have them from an early age um, but, but yeah anyway adaptability um, risk tolerance that is a massive one if you have good risk tolerance then you'll be able to throw a little bit more down on a deal more easily um, and essentially that could mean that it could take your reselling to the next level a lot quicker because you are able to throw down £500 or £1,000 or whatever it is um, when you, you know, you, you've obviously done your homework, you know it's a good deal but you're able to throw that money down and it's not too much of a pain to you um, whereas if you don't, if you have a very low tolerance for risk or a low tolerance for sort of throwing money down um, putting money on the table then that can sort of slow up your reselling, it can kind of play on your mind and you can be thinking well I don't really want to do that I don't want to throw that, that amount of money down, it's a bit scary, all that sort of stuff. You've got to have the stomach for it, basically. You've got to be able to stomach throwing a certain amount of money down. And basically, you've got to think, you've got to think it through, and you've got to have the intelligence to think, yes, this is a good deal, I, I am fairly safe. And, you, and that takes out some of the, the risk when you're looking into the deal a bit more. But also, you've got to think... You've got to sort of have the stomach for, if if I lose that money, am I okay with it, essentially? Because at the end of the day, nothing's ever really risk-free. I mean, a lot of there's a lot of these adverts and things online as well, splash pages and all that says risk-free cash and financial freedom and all that. But is any, anything really ever completely risk-free? I mean, that's what you've got to sort of ask yourself. So you've got to have high risk, to high tolerance to... Yeah, high tolerance to risk, that's the right word I'm trying to use. So, yeah, good risk tolerance anyway. And then passion, or being passionate about uh, about your reselling, about your business idea, about your entrepreneurial idea, whatever it is. You need to have that passionate, that burning desire, that enthusiasm that drives you. Um, and you could you can do it forever. You can comfortably say to yourself, you know what, I can go places doing this. Um, I can become really good at it, I'm really passionate, I'm enthusiasm, uh, I've got a lot of enthusiasm and that's what you, that's what you need to be like, that's, that will only help your business if you're that passionate and also if you're interested, interested as well as being passionate, if you're interested in what you're doing but I suppose if you are passionate then you're definitely going to be interested at the, at the same time um, but both of those, yeah, they're, they're really good, they're really help uh, help you as a reseller and in any form of business if you're passionate or any form of work really any job um, if you're passionate about it then it's going to come through in your work and it should do it should actually make your work better and uh, maybe not in all cases but it should make your work better so so yeah passionate being having passion for the job and also the last one self-discipline being able to say to yourself Without having someone above you, being able to say to yourself, look, right, today I'm going to get stuck in, I'm going to sort 20 items, I'm going to sort, sort 30 items, whatever it is, I'm going to prep them, going to test them, clean them, and I'm going to get them listed. Or, um, or you're going to maybe uh, enter a hundred items into Amazon, or whatever it is, you know, or, uh, or I'm going to wrap these 30 parcels that I've had from over the weekend and then I'm going to set myself a target of maybe 10 to list or 15 to list and and it's all about saying to yourself I've got the self-discipline to do it I'm, I'm gonna do it I'm just gonna do it I'm gonna get my head down I don't need anyone telling me what what you know outlining what I need to do I I know what I'm doing I'm gonna do it so it's like that sort of self-discipline oh got a message then let me have a look uh, anyway, yeah, I'll answer that in a minute. So, uh, yeah, so that's it, yeah. Five little tips of being a good, what I feel, uh, some of the traits that I feel make a good reseller. Not necessarily all the traits that make a good reseller, obviously there's a lot more different things to it. Um, and it also comes down to a personal level as well. Um, but also, uh, they are, I would say, the, the sort of, the, the five that come to mind for me, 
when you say what are the five traits that make a good reseller, are there the five that really spring out to me? So yeah, anyway, I'll leave it there guys. We're just coming up to 10 minutes. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now guys. Hope you enjoyed that video guys. Don't forget to go down below for exclusive content all free over on my website and blog. Updated every week just for you guys. So see you over there.